This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. Kicksville. The Trippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hip Ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Say hello to our friends jumping on at 98.9, the Rock Kansas City's rock station. Also, uh, the Big Dog, 97.9 in Joplin, Missouri, and our friends at 103.3, the Fort Rockin' in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Big show for you. Who sucks less? The word goes to state slang, and Joe Jackson has uh, passed on. Not uh, the stepping out Joe Jackson, but uh, the uh, patriarch of the Jackson family, uh, the Jackson Five, Michael Jackson, uh, who could forget Latoya Jackson, all the famous Jackson. Jacksons that you know. Oh, man. Latoya Jackson. What I remember most about her... Uh, Playboy point, Magazine and the Ball Constrictor. The Playboy Magazine, and uh, it was a big, massive deal, again, at my age, that she was going to pose in Playboy. I want to say it's one of their best-selling uh, issues. So... Finally get my hands on this, and this was like uh, this was like having gold, man. And we're in high school, we'd sneak out of the cafeteria, and there's like eight of us. And we're looking at the, the photo shoot, and it was what it was. And then it kind of occurred to us all at once, right? Like, dude, she looked so much like Michael that it got real unsexy real quick. Like, I mean, she had a great body and all this stuff, but in the end... I'm looking at Michael Jackson with breast in a Gilligan's Island hat. Yep. And it, it just kind of ruined it for me, man. And she looked a lot like Janet Jackson, too, who was I was introduced to, and a lot of us were, when Good she, times. she was an actress, and she came on Good Times. And Penny! Then, I want to say that Different there, Strokes! Yeah, she went on and became Willis's uh, girlfriend in That's Different correct. Strokes. And, and I was just like, next, this she, woman is beautiful, and she kept popping up everywhere, and I was like, ah, man, I, and I had, and you don't, you don't know she's a Jackson. You know I had no idea, man. But uh, then went on to do that stuff. So, who is a person from your family everyone will remember, and good or bad, what will they be remembered for? 844-999-OLA. I always take Janet for Rhythm Nation. Yeah, Look hey, man, that, that, was, uh, that was a good time. Yeah. That was a good time for all of us. Uh, a couple of real quick comments there. Ola, bitches! My great-grandmother was an Italian seamstress and sewed the dresses for President Ronald Reagan's wedding. Wow. That's pretty significant. That is yeah. a big deal. Uh, let's see. And then this one, it says, uh, let's see here. If you're chewing on an imaginary sandwich, what kind of sandwich do you think they're chewing like, on? Like, what would you pick? <laughs> I it mean, it looks like it's... You just, know what it, hang on. You, I don't know the flavor, but it's cut in triangles, and you, like... Unzip plastic to get okay, that sandwich. Right. See, I'm saying it's a peanut butter sandwich because it looks like there's a lot of chewing going on. Peanut butter on white bread and with nothing to drink. A lot of people suggested peanut butter jelly. If it's me, I'm going after the fridge dip, but you know, to each their own. No, it's no, no, imaginary. Saying, no. Because there's a lot of chewing what? going on. Like, it's, it's either a really grisly piece of meat. What? I can't like, have a fridge dip no, imaginary but, in my mouth no, when you're I'm crackhead. high on crack. That's something crackhead. weird. Like, like Tuna fish yeah, on a hot day. You gotta be chewing for a long time. You think man. a crackhead would pick a tuna fish? At the hot day, I can offer you a fridge dip or a tuna fish sandwich. You say they're going, you know what? You're right. No, you're right. That's what I'm saying. They it's will crack. Pick, they will take the wrong choice every time. You're right. It's crack. No, man. I used to like tuna. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. It's a million degrees, man. That machine's not even on, but go I'm, ahead and eat it. I'm just imagine I'm chewing into my mouth now. Right. I just remember I ate tuna. <laughs> Hello, Jamie. Welcome to the men's room. Hola! Hola! How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Doing fantastic. I was in, stuck in traffic on 167. I was thinking you were stuck mm-hmm. in traffic on 174, so I'm glad you made it to 167 finally. Here's my assumption. If you are in a car right now, you are stuck in traffic. Yeah. Anywhere. And if you're ever in on 167, country. any time of day, you're in traffic. You're driving. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yep, and yep. I hate it to a D. Okay. <laughs> so uh, who is the, the person in your family that everyone will remember? I think I want to, it's for my grandfather. Um, He actually passed away nine years ago, three days before my birthday. And he did uh, phenomenal service in our military. Um, He was a staff sergeant. Okay. Um, What stories, what stories have you heard about him? Well, the ones that I can remember is a picture of me in his cowboy hat in the backyard walking with him back to his house. Other than that, um, he was just a great grandfather. He held my daughter. He was great from okay. what I remember of him. You know, it's amazing how it works with grandparents. I mean, generally speaking, I have very fond memories of my grandparents. They were very kind. They were very sweet. And then my mother would tell, and, and your parents are your parents, right? So your parents are the disciplinarian, the grandparents, 
generally are the much more patient. Right? Yes. So yes. as I'm getting older, because that's how you perceive it, and I see it with my kids now, you know, my mother's like, dude, your grandmother was the toughest woman on earth. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? She was nice all the time, and there's no way to explain that. And But my mother's talking about how much trouble she got into. And generally speaking, however my mother was as a kid is how I was as a kid, which is how my daughter it goes on, right? So my mother was always in trouble with my grandmother, and I'm just like... She's one of the kindest women that I've ever met. And, and my brother says the same thing. My mother's like, look, she was a lovely woman, but she was a hard ass. Okay. So my father, who's always been very, very fair, but he's been a man of few words and affection is not his thing. I have my daughter being the oldest one and I'm looking at him like, what the F is this? And I'm used to it now because my kids look at my parents the way I looked at my grandparents. And I'm like, listen, man. I know how wonderful you think they are, and they're good people, but understand, when you keep saying, you know, nothing makes Pop Pop mad, I'm like, dude, I made him mad for like 18 straight years, and trust me, it's, it's longer scary. Than that. I think longer than that. Well, once I moved out, it didn't matter as much. Yeah, you didn't but, have to but, be you still, there. but you still made him mad. I mean, even just if you're But I finally confronted him, him on it, and I said, hey, man, because he's like effing around with the kids and doing all the stuff, and I'm like, what is that? I'm like, how do they get all this? And the, I mean, like, he said, look. I had to raise your ass. So he's like, whatever I did with you, I still had to deal with you the next day. He's like, it doesn't matter if I give your kids sugar. It doesn't matter if I spoil them with Legos because it's like I get back to you. You mm. deal with it. He's like, <laughs> right back he at said, you. honestly, man, it's just that easy. See, my it's grandfather, this- man, he was, I, I respect what he did in the service and this and that. But, but yeah, I mean, he was still a salty, racist guy. Yeah, no, I was going to say, he my, always instilled fear in everybody and like, my grandfather. My was grandmother, an but my grandmother, on the other hand, she's the one in my family everybody would talk about. Because she wasn't just the grandmother to us Smiths. Like, she was the vice principal at, uh, what was it, St. Anthony's in D.C. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, she had kids all over the neighborhood in Northeast D.C. who, like, my grandma was their grandma, too. Okay. Well, I understand. That, that was my one my grandmother. My <laughs> other grandmother on my father's side, she can't even say she was kind. She was fair, but she was still terrifying in some way. And then after she passed, my mother's like, look, man. You can't believe, you cannot believe how tough that woman was. And my father's like, listen, it's it's no joke. She was the scariest woman on earth. And to give you an idea, okay, <laughs> the scariest so woman on earth. <laughs> this that is, is not a that is not that is a horrible voucher. Dude, but but not like there's just something about her presence where you know, and you just knew. Like when I became, she always wanted to play game, wanted to play dominoes, wanted to play blackjack. My brother was down with it. I didn't necessarily want to do it. I'm like seven, man. I want to play outside, but it wasn't like she asked. So I said, well, I'm going to go in the back. Sit your ass down. We're playing blackjack. <laughs> okay. She wanted to play spades once. They needed a per. I did not know how to play spades. Right. I am a child. So I figured my out is, hey, man, you know, like, I, I don't know how to play. And as a child, giving me directions and just in one ear out the other. Oh, I learned spades. And I learned it quickly because she was very clear. That's how it goes. To give you an idea of how she was. So when my parents met. As I understand this, okay? My father never says anything negative about people. And she said, you know your father. There's like one half of his family that you don't even know that he won't talk to. And I'm like, what? And she said, look, when we started dating and he introduced my mom to his side of the family, honest to God, from their perspective, my mom was too dark. Right? Because they're all Cajun and Creole and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's like in the South that happens, right? The black cat. Oh, yeah. So, which is a ridiculous... I was like, wait, what? And she's like, oh, yeah. Like, it was a thing. And and my father doesn't really tolerate that stuff. So he he cut it off and has not spoken to him. Mm -hmm. And these things don't bother him. And the stories that I have heard about him, and and even when I was a kid, stuff I never know about. We call him Batman, kind of. If there is an (laughs) injustice and he sees it. I'm going to give you an example of it. There's tons of them. They lived in Colorado. I guess it was some, like, tuxedo kind of thing. It was like at a symphony hall, right? So my brother and I have a babysitter. They're out with some other couple. And as my mom explains, and some they're serving martinis and all this. But everyone's outside on this balcony. And there's these two kids, like, 14 or 15 years old. And the way the balcony was, it was over the handicapped access ramp. And these kids were, like, spitting on the occasional person in a wheelchair. And people would look, but no one would do anything, right? So she said, your father, being your father, said, hold my martini. I'll be right back. Walks over, picks up one of the kids, and held him over the balcony and started mm. shaking him. Like, you think this is funny? If you fall down there, you're going to die. Maybe be in a wheelchair. But... And so, you know, everyone's looking at him. The parents of these kids, I guess, are going to say something. My father's like, I would drop his ass. You didn't say. All this stuff, right? 
obviously does not drop the kid, puts the kid down. The kid's now crying. The other adults that were there clap, and I'm like, this is my dad. And she's like, oh, yeah, this was last night. Uh, walks back over, tucks his shirt in, grabs his martini, and continues whatever story he's telling, as though nothing happened. And that's that's how he is. But you hear all this stuff secondhand, and I keep hearing these types of stories. If he feels that there's some injustice, like, he goes there and scares the living but Jesus. But you would never, he never says anything, man, ever to this day. And even if I ask him, like, did you did you beat up a guy at a gas station because he tried to f over some woman on her car? And he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he just you know he needed to figure it out. That's all of a sudden. It's like, <laughs> oh my god, man. Who is the person from your family? Everyone will remember, and good or bad, what will they be remembered for? Eight four four nine nine nine. Ola. Hello, Jacob. Welcome to the men's room. Howdy, boys. How you doing? Ola. Ola. So, who's the person in your family everyone will remember? Well. I'd have to say that'd be my grandfather. Uh, that's it. Well, well, guess what? Great man. He, he was not be remembered oh, here. Oh, yeah, I no. get. I get why people remember him. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, he probably had some wonderful story. You'll never believe this. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days, isn't it? <laughs> what are you saying, Mike? He had a big penis. Oh, oh no way! Is that what it was? That, well, because his oh. granddad had a big. All right, oh, Mike just you did charades. Be he way, he did. So yeah, this guy. Was hey, look, s- that that counts. Yes, that if, counts. If you're remembered for right. that, how big is your penis if the one thing yeah. everyone says is, hey, man, whatever else he was, he had the, a huge crack. Look, there was two nurses that were fired from a hospital because they were bringing in other coworkers to look at a deceased man's penis because it was so ridiculously large. They couldn't get enough of looking at it. They were in awe of it, right? But they got fired for looking at it. That's okay. He's dead. If I'm a family member of that guy, I come in and say, hey, look, man, I know what we want. I know what they did breaks policy and it's wrong, but just so you know, our family does not mind. And if you want to hire them back again, we are we're perfectly in cahoots with that. What That's I would okay. do is open casket, but from yeah. the waist down. Yes, exactly. Right. Who is the uh, the person from your Take family? Take a gander. Everyone will remember, and good or bad, what will they be remembered for? Eight four four nine nine nine. Ola. More your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Welcome back to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. A castaway who dubbed himself the Naked Hermit, who lived on a desert island for 30 years, says he has been forced to live in civilization. The man spent the last three decades living on the deserted island of uh, Soto Benari. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the Yayamama Islands. Yayamama. In solitude. Yayamama Islands. The 82-year-old, who became known as the Naked Hermit because of the fondness for living in the nude, said his only wish was to die on the island. But authorities have since removed him from his favorite place on Earth after he became ill in April, and they have banned him from ever returning home. Uh, One of the persons who was, I guess, documentary casting the island uh, man said he was kicked out of the island. Someone saw him on the island. They called the police. They took him back to civilization. He couldn't even fight back because he was so sick and he was so weak, and they won't allow him now to return. Uh, he moved from one of these southwestern uh, islands that uh, are owned by uh, Japan in 1989. Uh, he has lived there with no phone, no lighter, uh, fresh water, or clothes. I'm sure he has to have some type of fresh water source. Uh, the island braves typhoons and mosquitoes. Uh, it is an area where fishermen rarely even stop. I will never find a paradise like this, he told one man. By the way, it should be noted that uh, it's not known why he ended up living on the island. It is believed that he was, in fact, at the time when he left, married with children, but he refuses to talk about his past. That is definitely going to be the memorable guy. He's been there, what, 30 years? 30 years. Just by himself. Why Why do they care? I don't know. They just let him die. I mean, look at it. Look look like he's having a good time out there, just, you know, just doing his thing. And you know what, man? That's what they said, because... the point to leave civilization, like, I don't want to sound harsh, we're like, all right, let him leave. I I think it's fair. He's been there for 30 years, and they said, like, he was getting sick. And and my thing is just this. One, he's 82 years old, he's been living alone, so he's going to be gone. I'm sure he's gotten sick. But look, in the 30 years he's been there, I'm sure he has endured many hardships that we don't Mm -hmm. know about. Yeah. He figured it out, man. Leave him alone. Matter of fact, he's got most all of his teeth. Now, they don't look straight, but he has all of his teeth. Right, you know what I mean? Like, it's like how he was fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who is the uh, person from your family that everyone will remember? And good or bad, what will they be remembered for? 844-999-OLA. Uh, good news, everyone. We have Jacob back to tell us about his grandfather's large penis. Oh, cool. The uh, phone died before we got Sweet. there. Now, is that accurate? Your grandfather will be known because of his large penis? Oh, uh, 100%, boys. 100%. I mean, I mean it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a known thing. 
So, so, anyways, moral story is that we so we go up to hunting camp, right? And my uh, my old man, he he's got a uh, one of his pipe players to come up with us. And he's never met Matt Grabs before, so we get up there and uh, we're getting ready for breakfast. And, and Grabs, he uh, he's a little late out of bed, so he comes pulling out in the whitey tighties, and uh, we're sitting there at the dining room table and. He whips that old side cloud out and starts beating that thing against the dining room table. And he said, Ma, where's the biscuits and gravy at? And you should have seen that, that pipe player's eyes, man. Boy, he thought he had to pay for the show or something. I, I ain't never seen nothing like that either in my life. I was seven years old. You were I mean, seven was, years old. You're seven years old. Your, Your grandfather, grandfather comes downstairs. The guest in the house. Starts tapping his penis against the table asking for breakfast. No, beating it. Beating that thing. Beating the table with his penis and then asking where the biscuits are. That's right. Yeah, man, man you can, yeah, it was, it was a wild deal. I, my, I didn't know what the hell thing. Yeah, I don't think you did. Uh, no, no. And how about your dad? Was he, uh, was he like, hey, dad, don't whip that out in front of my son? Or did he not say no, anything? No, hell no. No, he crossed his arms, leaned back, and like, that's right, boys. You know, you know, we come from good stock. I mean, we come from good stock. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. come from good yeah, stock. Yeah, I guess you do. In more ways That's than one. Right. So even if you yeah. got just even a small percentage of what granddad had, you would be doing okay. Well, wait, about how old was your grandfather at the time he did this? Oh, he was about, about 65 at the time. Okay. And how long did he yeah. live? Uh, he's, still, he's still kicking, man. He's stronger right. than ox. He, he's an old logger up from Darrington, yeah. Man. Okay. He's a good, one of them good old boys. He's a cowboy. One of them cowboys. Well, hopefully you know, if you go and see him, he doesn't still do the old penis on the table trick. You know, you know what, man? I think <laughs> if you do it once, you're good to go after that. Thump, 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 thump. Where's the biscuits? I cannot imagine in any circumstance where I have house guests just like, I want my biscuits. Who is the person <laughs> from your family everyone will remember, and good or bad, what will they be remembered for? 844-999-OLA. I mean, look, I don't know the guy's grandfather, but I think he would be more remembered for that moment than the actual size of his penis. Even yeah. if you have a tiny penis and you beat it against a breakfast table asking for food, I'd be like, oh, no, that's the story I remember. I just have a weird rule in my house. No penises on the table. You know what? On oh, the dining room table? I think that's fair. You know, just ten, tables oh, in general. Don't okay, go, right. Coffee tables off limits, too. I'm old-fashioned like you. Like, yeah. hey, listen, man. No, you can keep your shoes on, but uh, while you're here, if I could ask one thing, try not to put your penis on any of my tables. I have a glass coffee yeah. table that I lay under every once in a while so people can do weird stuff above it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Film with a 3D camera. Sure, right, exactly. Hello, Brandon. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hola. Hola. Hey, uh, I try and listen to you guys every day from Victoria, B.C., Canada. <laughs> Hey, thank you, man. We appreciate it. That's a beautiful spot, man. That's one of the prettiest places in North America for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I, uh, one of the guys I always look up to is my grandpa. Okay. <clears throat> uh, he's been racing stock cars in Victoria since the mid-1950s, and he still does today, and he's 80 years old. So nice. is, it, is it the same same class, different car? Is it, does he is he the same guy who goes out and works on new cars? What's, I mean, what's he racing, like Hornets or, or, or like real, real it's, race cars? It's like a... Uh, it's like Monte Carlo's, uh, you know, stock car, 350 uh, motors. What kind of speed do these things hit? I don't know. I'd say down the front stretch, he probably hits 100 miles an hour. Okay. Is, that a, is that an open canopy? Is that an open cockpit racing car? Oh, no. It's got a roll cage and everything. Okay. okay. All right. Now, um, what about you? Yeah, is it Pete, your interest in racing at all? Yeah, I raced for about 10 years. I used to race with him a little bit, but uh, not anymore. It's a little expensive. But it's pretty funny the way Grandpa explains that it's his exercise. He doesn't need to go to a gym anymore. What does he do? <laughs> just race cars? Yeah, he just hops in the race car and goes out there. That's his exercise for the week. How old is he now? Uh, yeah, he's 80 years old today. Is, uh, is, is, is Grandma still around as well, or is she... Uh... <laughs> uh, I don't know, somewhere probably. I think he said he got divorced three times. He said okay. that was it. So, he's, so, your granddad, so I was going to ask, is Granddad a ladies' man? Uh, they, they called him Gentleman Jim Steen at the Speedway. Then, yes. <laughs> yes, he is. And the answer then is yes. yes. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> you can't not be a ladies' man if you're racing cars in no. your 80s, right? Yeah. yeah, that's great. I mean, and, and if you're yeah. racing cars in your 80s, right, like, do people still tell you to be careful? You know, like, when you, no. you have so much, yeah. I mean, at 80 years old, like, bro, you've had your life. Do your thing. That's impressive. Right. Who is a person from your family everyone will remember, and good or bad, what will they be remembered for? 844-999-OLA. Quick question. What do you honestly think you would still be capable of doing at age 80, and would you want to do it anymore? I just want to make sure I can still have sex. Yeah, but do you think you'll be having... Like, you could have Lots sex of now. It because, look, I don't, but, have, I don't have anything to you, do then, right? right? But if you're not giving, Like, look, even if they said, look, you could still have sex, unfortunately, no one wants to have sex with you. 
Yeah, I think mobility. You know, I think being I able just, to walk just around. Just being able, honestly, like at eight, like just being able to walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? yeah, mobility's got to be huge. Because if you it's, go someplace, you want to be able to see things, and you want to be able to not tire out. And yeah, you might have to sit down every once in a while. But my thing is like, look, if I, I, I would hope I could still get ten thousand steps in or whatever, you know, because that way you could like you could uh, see stuff if you have, go like, someplace. A, yeah, and like I'm, I don't know, like it, I walk by these like kind of older. Age apart- homes? Yeah. Or, okay, yeah. I don't know what to, they're not like nursing homes, but you see a lot of people and they go for walks, but they have like walkers, so they can only go so far. Right. Sure. Not only Whereas, that. you know what I mean? Like, I'm with you. Like, at 80, I feel like if I could still, I don't know, just, I, just, I don't know what to do. Go yeah. walk to McDonald's yeah. early in the morning, right? Get a call. Like, like, nobody <laughs> wants to use the walker, but the bright side of the walker, I think, it means that person still wants to mm. do something. You know, and like, my, I know for you, and, and we always make a joke, but I know this to be true. Miles, you need to still be walking at 80 because you know damn well. You're going to be the metal detector guy. Well, not only and that, you don't do anything you know what, man, except metal. I just detector. like seeing stuff. So for me, I have relatives who, and this is a don't don't think that the age is is the determining factor here because it's not always a determining factor. But I know what I'm able to do with them based on their ability just to be able to walk. Right. So I have uh, uh, family members that come in. We can't go to a sporting event because. It's going to be too far to walk. Even if we were walk to the bus and the bus would drop us off close to the stadium, that would be too far of a walk. But it's tough we to walk have, up the stadium. We, would have to, yeah. we could pull right up to the front, and the walk from that front to the seat would be too much for the person that I'm thinking of in particular at this point in time. Now, dude, look, I'm with you. My parents are the exact same age. When my mom comes to visit, we go everywhere. We walk all around town. My dad comes to visit. You got to take an Uber to the front. Like he can't walk because right, right. Right. he just doesn't walk. Sure. So if you don't walk, <laughs> you can't walk, and that's yeah. That, People that don't. <clears throat> so I know a lot. Of, we have to customize. Just you know, you become that person who I, I don't have a car, but you know, looking for a parking spot, have spot in the front or all this stuff, and it's just I don't want to be that person. Right. I just want to be able to have a little bit more freedom just by staying active enough to where my body can walk. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I guess really that's the primary <laughs> thing, right? Man, yeah, if I have mobility, yeah. I can do if I, something. If I have time yeah. to travel, I'd love to be able to see the places on foot. Because guess what? I, m- most places aren't going to pull me to the front of whatever. I'd, I'd like to still be able to have a cold beer once in a while. Yeah, oh, to the I point mean, where you haven't drank so much that you had to give it up? That would be good for me. Or just <laughs> health-wise, like, can you can you still have alcohol at that age? Yeah. I, yeah. It, yeah. And look, I don't know, but I, I feel like, you know, even that. as my parents get older, there's some things that they'll cut out of their diet, you know, salt and all this stuff that you expect, but they still have wine, beer, like that. Mm-hmm. And granted, I'm not, they don't drink the way we drink, but I mean, they, well, my mother, she'll put out some wine. But still, that, for whatever reason, alcohol does not seem to be anything that affects them any different than anyone else. And that I appreciate. Yeah. I really do. Our question, who is a person from your family that everyone will remember, and good or bad, what will they be remembered for? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Mary. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola. How are you, Mary? And who is the person in your family everyone will remember? My brother. Your brother. And let, let, yeah. we're going to have to guess why, right? Uh, I can tell by the way this conversation is going, you're not going to supply much information. Wait, is he an older or younger brother? Older. He's older. How many uh, years older? Is animal, vegetable, three. or mineral? All right. Three. Um, three years older. Is he still alive? Yes. Does he have... I'm just asking yes or no questions. Do people generally like him, or is he someone you need to warn people about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hmm... <laughs> like, if I were to meet your brother, would you have to tell me... The brother's a strange one, huh? ...a few things about him? I'm sorry? If I were going to meet your brother, would you have to say, look, before you meet him, know this, that, and the other? Yeah, I would. <laughs> All right. He's very intense. All right, Mary, what is your brother? Why will he be rememberable? Why is he memorable? Because of the impact that he has on society and on children especially. In a very depressed area of Steelton, Pennsylvania. Is he Mr. Rogers? <laughs> no. <laughs> he owns a tattoo shop, a skateboard shop, and just opened up a, uh, a, a skate park in Steelton. Oh, very oh, cool. Skate park. Oh, uh, but I would, have to, I would have to say, be careful. I would warn you that he's surrounded by the police. <laughs> Okay. So is he like one of these guys who kind of, uh, and I, this would be a bit of a reach, all right? But you have someone like Pablo Escobar, right? Generally right. speaking, not the nicest yeah. guy in the world, but then the flip side of him, uh, he opened a lot of schools and other things. So is he like a an yeah. intensely hard-to-deal-with guy who does good things? 
Absolutely. Like, he's a saint. He really is. He has been such a huge influence in my life. He went to school for art education and was trying to open up a, initially the first thing, you know, just trying to um, teach children with special needs through art. Oh, wow. A very difficult area. Lost his job because kids are trying to beat each other up in the hallway and he pulled one kid off the other and he got spoken to and just gave up on it. He gave up on it as far as working for the schools, but not working with kids. All right, so how has yeah. it impacted your... I mean, I would say this is positive, good stuff. And I know some people that do great things, but I'm still horrible. How has it impacted you? He's an inspiration to me. You know, he. I know the, the background and where we came from and the area that we live in. And he still chooses and refuses to leave a very depressed Okay. Area. Where are you from? In, I, where, where is this in Pennsylvania? Is that where you're from? Yeah, Steelton, Pennsylvania, where Bethlehem Steel and TMI Ooh, is. Okay. Is that kind of more closer to Pittsburgh? Is that on the western side of Pennsylvania? It's central Pennsylvania. It's right okay. outside of Harrisburg. We were in just other words, we were in the middle of nowhere. Mary, you'd be surprised. We were just uh, earlier today having a conversation about uh, that area of the country, so uh, believe it or not. So, yeah, most yeah. people don't like it. It's what we were saying. No, yeah, we were saying uh, it's tough to live in. All right, Mary, some comments are coming in. I'm going to ask the questions they're asking me. Are you high? No. No, you are not high. Uh, no. Is your brother a serial killer? <laughs> no. Okay. No, these are just the questions that, that people wanted to know uh, based okay. on it. Right. Well, I'm glad, but do you work with children? Are you helping children if he's if he's letting you inspiration and all that? Uh, no. I, I <laughs> no, I stay away from him. Can't stand him, as a matter of fact. I won't even have sex because I'm afraid I might have a well, child. I, I work with my daughter and my granddaughter. Oh, okay. No, all right. All right. Not, not like he does. He, well, I mean, I work with my kids doing homework, but ask me what I think about homework. I'll ask you them. what you think you'd rather be doing. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Every time I'm doing This is what pisses me off, all right? So... I, and also, I would start with he does good things for children he, in the neighborhood, as opposed to he'll be known for his interaction with children. Right? Yeah. Exactly. That sounded horrible. Because we don't know what direction it's going to be. Right. Right. Maybe you read about him. God, the one thing, the guy with the van and the candy. I truly hate doing homework, and I hate doing homework with the kids. Not because it's the kids. I just It's homework again, mm -hmm. right? So they do it a little better with me because it's like, come on, man, let's just get this over with. So the end of the school year has come and gone. I'm very happy for me because I don't have to do this crap anymore. And to be honest, I genuinely remember in the morning right before they have to go to school. My daughter has decided that it, she's leaving first grade and going to second grade, okay? This is her summer break. So what did she do? She has gotten herself uh, actual, like, mathematics workbooks for second and third grade and is voluntarily doing homework now. Hmm. And I have tried to talk to her. I'm still trying to sign parental. Like, look, part of me is proud of her. Like, wow, that's really great. Uh, here's the effing problem, man. Like, homework is strictly obligatory. You don't have to do this. I don't like doing it. And I'm sitting here trying to eat dinner. And you have pulled out a textbook that you don't need to be looking at. And I'm helping you with homework again. And, yes, I understand. I'll look back on this and say, isn't that wonderful she did that? I will, but I'm not looking back. I'm living in it, and I'm telling you, it pisses me off. I'm like, the kids need that summer. I, man, well, they need it, the break. Do, yeah. I get it, but this is what she wants to do. I think that's great. The problem is, and, and I try to explain this kind of like, hey, baby, if this is what you want to do, daddy thinks that's great. Daddy really, really does not want to do this with you. Daddy hates homework. This is mm -hmm. actually, it pisses me off, and you annoy me, but instead, I've been sitting down doing math homework saying, what's wrong with you? What Who's the, uh, you? the person from your family that everyone will remember, and good or bad, what will they be remembered for? Real quick, uh, Mike Hawk, is there a strange uh, aura going on today with the calls? Do you notice anything? It's been a weird week, man. Do you man. notice anything different in what's going on? Is it just, you know, a strange... I think it's somewhere between when they talk to me and when they talk to you, because I swear to you guys. What happens? They're not this weird when they're on the line with me. Yes, they, they have to be. They can't be. Yeah. I don't... Either that or I just it doesn't come out in my ears when I hear it on okay. the phone. Okay, all right, fair enough. Now, fair to be enough. fair, uh, sometimes uh, Michael put a little note up for me to have someone's name. Uh -huh. and if it, just, have you seen any notes today? No, no notes today. All right. That, that's my point. I give you one or two notes. Okay, you did it yesterday. I will not repeat how it came out. <laughs> I don't know how many people caught it, but uh, I, I read what I saw, mm -hmm. and there was no response. Then I made a second guess what the name might be, and they responded. God, I really don't want to say what it was, but it was, it was uh, D, right? 
Yes. Yeah. And so I. That seemed like a funny name when you said it. <laughs> well, I thought. I do remember that one. Okay. Yeah. It's just based. You know what? I'll just say what it was. So the guy's name was D, but it said D Foreigner. All right. And I thought it was someone called, called themselves D Foreigner. D Foreigner. <laughs> so, so yesterday I say. Oh, he was from Columbia. Ola yeah. D Foreigner, right? Mm-hmm. And there's no response. And I'm like, oh no. Ola D, right? And the guy responds. So then Mike shows up in the window, just mouth and leg. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I remember that as in, in no, no. English. English heavy, was a little broken. I just that. right. No, I missed heavy it. accent. I missed that. So I say D and this guy pops on, and I felt so bad because I wasn't my goal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sucked. Oh, <laughs> wow, that was great. Hello, Michael. Welcome to the men's room. <laughs> Hola. Hola. So, I think the person most likely to be remembered for the incident would be my aunt. Uh-oh. Um, now, my aunt was the nicest, sweetest old lady to ever meet uh, in her late 60s, though she did like to day drink quite a bit. So, at one point, she decided to go day drinking. I believe it was on a Wednesday. Uh and she was trying to walk home from the bar. Now, the police in Spokane stopped her while she was trying to walk home from the bar. She was four walks from her, four blocks from her house. And uh, she looked, according to the police report, I actually looked it up, looked at the officer and said, I'm going to make you earn it, and kicked him square in the testicle. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, a whiz. This is the now, nicest he, old lady he, you'll ever meet. The, the fight was on, and he called for backup. And uh, according to the court report, it took eight police officers to subdue my belligerently, stumblingly drunk 65 or 67-year-old Aunt Carol. And no one in your family amazing. could take that many officers down at one time. You know what? I, I kind of like Aunt Carol. Aunt Carol. Aunt Carol. Damn, man. Mm-hmm. Just and I like how he said, she's the sweetest old lady. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. All right. Obviously, she Give is. it up for Aunt Carol. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little day drinking, right? <laughs> Who is a person from your family that everyone will remember, and good or bad? What will they be remembered for? Hold on the line there. More of your calls coming up. 844-999-OLA. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Silicon, the return of who sucks less. And the word goes to state slang. Our question, who would you say is the person from your family that everyone will remember, and good or bad? Uh, what will they be remembered for? I think more probably bad uh, memories as far as what was uh, said about Joe Jackson, who passed away sure. at the age of 89 years old. I want to say Michael Jackson uh, talked extensively about the fact that uh, of uh, what he uh, had to go through uh, when he was a kid. So, uh, who's a person from your family that everyone will remember? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Nicole. Welcome to the men's room. Hola! Hola! So, in my family, for our kids, we have a split house. So, uh, my fiancé has got grandmas and grandpas for the kids, and I have them. So, when we talk about grandparents, my mom's mom always comes up. And I say, hey, we're going to go see Gigi. And they go, is that the one obsessed with boobs? And I would say, she I hope so. Loves boobies. Your grandmother, well, your grandmother loves boobs? Yes. Well, and who- she's, um, she was with a uh, man he recently passed. Um, he was my grandpa for like 40 years. But she is obsessed with boobs for whatever reason. Like she will point out like nice set as you're walking by. She'll be like, oh, Nicole, look it. And I'm like. Grandma, please don't. Does she this do this? One thing if I'm with my fiance, but don't. No, not with my grandma. Does she do this to mess with you, or legitimately she just can't help herself around a pair of nice boobs? She loves boobs, just in general. Uh, she, my uh, fiance's daughter is developing, and then she goes, "Oh, look how big your boobs are getting." I'm like, "Grandma, Ugh. you can't see that." You can't <laughs> yeah. <learn. That's>... Stop. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, look, uh, I really like boobs, me too, too I but say, I don't I, say it out loud. No, you can't do that, especially when you're a guy. Wow, look at those boobs you have. Great boobs. Man, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't get you very far in life. All right, well, I'm curious to know, what has your grandmother said about your boobs? Oh, she likes them. Okay. Um, they're D, so I, as I grew, she's like, oh, yeah, you're definitely going to outgrow your mom, aren't you? And <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. Is there Please, anyone? Yeah. 12 years old, and I really want to know I'm going to outgrow my mom. Is there anyone in your family whose boobs grandma doesn't like? Like, well, I don't like that, Cindy. Her own. Oh, uh, maybe that's what's going on okay. here. All right. Well, yeah. she, used, she used to have real, so she used to be really, really skinny. So she had smaller boobs and then she got a little bit larger. So now she's got like H's 
And so she hates her own, but she loves everybody else. H's? Hmm. You know what? Yeah. You're a woman. I think you have, You obviously, you can comment more on boobs. You can talk more on boobs. You know, you have boobs. You know more about them. Uh, we just can't talk about the boobs. Well, we can, that's why I like, I don't have, a, there was an episode of Seinfeld once, and I think they were talking about boobs, if I remember correctly. But long story short, Ass man, Elaine man. said something to Jerry about, why do you guys always go boobs? Why not legs? And he said, I have legs. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, that's, we, look, you can have nice legs, but I have legs. Mm-hmm. The things that excite me are the things I don't have. I mean, really, it's that easy. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I like butts. I like butts. I like butts. And I have a butt. Well, we talked and about I do this. like butts. Talk- I like legs, but I really like boobs. We talked about this the other day. It's like it's like having a kid. If you have someone who is older in your life, and it, once they get to the point, man, where the filter is gone, the filter is gone. My grandmother, she doesn't even realize the filter is gone. Right. Which means the filter is gone. Absolutely. Because when she's not cognizant, like, I'll go, Grandma, and she'll be like, what? Like, she doesn't even know. That's what we used to call right, them. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. A lot but of the, things have changed. Yeah, the colored yeah. people. No, no. Hey, it's better no. than what it could have been. Yeah. Hola. The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.